Hey, Soul Survivors, I'm Cynthia Schiller. We're going to talk about what's normal, what isn't, what is mental health versus mental illness, and when we should seek treatment. Um, so this is a pretty interesting topic. So, you know, sometimes we might be afraid to give a speech in public. Does that mean we have some mental health disorder, or is it just a normal case of the nerves? When does shyness become social phobia? So mental health, it's the overall wellness of how you think, how you regulate your feelings, and also how you behave. So for somebody to have NPD, narcissistic personality disorder, they have to have five out of nine traits. Plus it has to adversely affect their life in some way, such as a breakup, loss of a job. Um, but a lot of times the narcissist can go undiagnosed if it doesn't affect them. A lot of times the narcissist is just happy with how their life is going because they feel they can just move on um, or they don't want to admit what's really going on. Sometimes they can have some pretty severe depression when they're not getting uh, their supply. So uh, a mental health disorder may be present when there's certain patterns or changes in thinking. Uh, also with the way feelings are or uh, behaving. Uh, causing distress or to disrupt somebody's ability to function. So a mental health disorder can affect you on how well you can maintain family relationships, interpersonal relationships, social setting, functioning, how you perform, whether it's at work or at school, even uh, learning at a level that is at age uh, and intelligence. Um, and also whether somebody participates in other types of important activities. So there are cultural norms, social expectations that kind of uh, define what we feel mental health uh, normality and disorders might be. So it can vary culturally. Uh, so there's no quite that standard across cultures to determine whether uh, it's a norm or a disorder. So that does need to be taken into consideration. So the DSM is a guide. It's the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. We're currently in the fifth edition. And um, it has the signs and symptoms of several hundred mental health conditions. And that can include anxiety, depression, uh, different types of eating disorders, anorexia nervosa. Anorexia itself is just a, a weight loss, but when it's nervosa, it deals with the mind. Um, Post-traumatic stress disorder and even things such as schizophrenia. So this, this manual, this DSM uh, gives us criteria that is used to make the diagnosis. And there have been changes over time um, because of societal things and uh, you know, how, how things change uh, in perceptions or research. So uh, there is also the World Health Organization and health insurance companies use this coding system of diagnosing um, from the DSM, um, the International Classification of Diseases, the ICD, and they use that to determine the benefit that would be used to reimburse different kinds, types of mental health professionals. So how are these diagnosed? How do we come up with giving somebody the diagnosis of a mental illness? Uh, it can be made by a psychiatrist, a clinical social worker, mental health professional, psychologist, and a primary care doctor uh, may have some type of involvement in this assessment to diagnose. They often make referrals to a mental health specialist. So the diagnosis can be based on several different factors, whether it's a medical history of physical illness, mental health disorders in uh, the patient or their family. They take a complete history to identify or rule out any condition that may be causing symptoms. So sometimes uh, you know, you can go through depression for different reasons or certain medications can affect you and questions about current concerns or why you're seeking help. You know, do, do they see the distress or do they feel that they're just, you know, being bullied into it? And then, you know, you can see where their self-esteem is, uh, setting boundaries, or, uh, if it's a facade, uh, questions about recent 
events, um, changes in life. There are certain events that we go through that are uh, more stressful than others. Some of the highest stress uh, ones are such as marriage. Marriage is high stress. Also divorce, uh, buying a new home, moving, loss of a job, changing jobs sometimes too. So uh, they'll also ask questions about the current or past thoughts about violence against yourself uh, or others, questionnaires, uh, or you know, even interpersonal interviews completed by someone who knows you well, such as a parent or spouse, to get their perspective on things. So it's not always just with the person. They can go to the extended families, uh, family. Um, so they will also ask about current and past drug use, alcohol use, a history of any trauma, um, family issues, family crises, uh, any type of physical or emotional abuse, major life events. And when is this evaluation or treatment needed? When these health conditions um, have a marked change in personality, eating or sleeping patterns, that something's going on, uh, people who have problems coping with day-to-day -day activities that they uh, sometimes can have disconnection, disassociation. They might withdraw from normal activities. And people who have uh, a different type of thinking, like magical thinking or unusual thinking may have a mental illness. Um, people who deal with excessive anxiety and when uh, the depression and anxiety or even just apathy, um, when it's prolonged, there might be something going on. And any type of suicidal thoughts or fantasies or attempts, substance misuse. And people who have extreme mood swings often suffer from mental health issues. And people who have anger issues um, violent behavior, hostility towards people. Sometimes it's uh, at the drop of a hat. So a lot of people who have mental health disorders feel that their signs and symptoms are normal, that, you know, they're just sad or they're just an anxious person. And that's why a lot of times people don't seek advice or help. So if you're struggling with certain things, there is help that is available. And you can contact your primary care doctor, make an appointment. And there is NAMI, which is free, uh, N-A-M-I. And they have uh, support coaches. Also 988 is the new suicide uh, hotline, which is direct, uh, easy to remember, 988. That is in uh, America. So our country code is one so uh, I'm not sure how that works with international calling, but if you're in a crisis, you might want to think about doing that. Um, but I'm about to do a video on the arrested development to try to understand ourselves uh, and also the uh, narcissist on the arrested development of their brain. And were they uh, alcohol or drug users. I'm going to talk about marijuana, the developing brain and arrested development is when you get stuck in a stage of your life. So please uh, search for in my channel, arrested development, and you will be able to see that if you'd like more information on that, I'm going to make that now, but understanding the brain is going to help a lot to understand where our person is. Can they heal? Will they change? Why are they stuck? Why do they do what they do? And it's really interesting, the different stages of development and where our person got stuck. So I hope this was helpful for understanding yourself or a loved one. And I'll see you in the next video. Comment below if you have any topic requests. I do live chats pretty much daily. So I hope to see you and take care. Keep healing. The more you know, the quicker you'll heal. See you soon.